Our final guest tonight is the 2015 winner of the Neil Postman Award for Metaphor from Rattle Magazine. She will be giving talks this summer at the Chicago Art Institute and at the 2015 Critters Ball, and will have new poems out in Pleiades in a couple of months. Follow her on Twitter at Hannah underscore Gamble and on Instagram at Wrath underscore Hats. Right now, one hand meeting another is a great noise for Hannah Gamble. <laughs> Everybody. I was in a band once, so I know how to move my own microphone <laughs> Just a little bit higher. Yeah. Um, going to read some poems tonight, like I tend to do. Um, although I also, I was also thinking of reading just a little um, Facebook instant message that my little brother Daniel sent me this morning. I woke up to, you know, whatever that sound is that Facebook makes, and it was my brother telling me, I just had a dream about you where you were talking to some cops and it looked pretty serious, and they were saying that you probably looked like the kind of person who was into fairy stuff, like, <laughs> like tranny windows, which he added in parentheses, like he understood in the dream was meant to be a kind of drug that I liked. <laughs> so well. He lives in Chattanooga. I'm up here in Chicago. We rarely see each other. He's in the service of the Lord. Therefore, I omit many things about my life from the story. And yet his dreams know everything. But I did want to say that I don't normally use the word tranny. And I'm sorry, that was that happened in my brother's dream. I probably, I find it a little insensitive. Um... <laughs> Um, actually, this poem is a little bit insensitive, too, in that it just, like, very, <laughs> it very brashly equates, like, Eastern um, experience with opium dens, just like that's a given. Maybe no one's bothered by that. <laughs> I have a right to my preferences and may present them, if itemized, before the board of directors. I know that part of being human is deferring to the experts. If I was not supervised by a parental bureaucracy, you would lose me to the opium dens. For I have heard that the philosophy of the East is a more peaceful one. Yet in the West it said, if our lives were meant to be peaceful, why did the Lord give us fingernails to chew on? With our teeth, humans are only allowed to resolve intrapersonal conflicts, and I'm grateful for it. My conflicts with myself keep me from flying in the face of strangers in the street, unlike the man in Kafka's story who would snatch a woman's handbag on a crowded train rather than go home to his wife's face, to which she was indifferent. It's true. Kafka fans, anyone? I feel like... That's actually a less, when you say Kafka S, it's like there's probably a maze, someone's on a mission, it's very dark, there's just one candle. Like, but there's this other one called something else that I can't remember that's just a guy on the train, like not wanting to go home and feeling all the pressure of like his life and his responsibilities. So at the end of the story he just like sees a woman like grabs her purse and just like becomes a, you know a criminal so that like something will keep him from having to go back to just you know boredom I guess um, and I don't know about you but for me boredom is like this close to severe clinical depression because you know you don't like things you don't know what you want to do nothing is interesting it's like a pretty bad way to be um, so I'll read some poems from, I guess I wrote these when I was in grad school and I was uh, more or less, I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't say that I was like a shut-in, but grad school does just kind of make you stay at home and read. <laughs> and when you're very lonely, you do definitely start talking to the things in your house. Like once I remember, <laughs> the, I was like, 
unscrewing something in my bathroom sink and it just fell off and I was like, that was an interesting decision. Like I said that. You're really, you're really making some interesting choices right now, bathroom sink. So here's a story. I mean a poem. A story. A poem. Leisure Hannah does not agree with you. Leisure Hannah does not agree with you. Mouth stuffed with garlic cloves, testicular in shape and pungency. You asked yourself permission for a chicken's breast, a loaf of bread slicked with butter, a cake with cherry glazes that would delight any little girl with gaps in her teeth clapping. Cake! Oh, cake! It's so worth a soiled dress. It's as if, Hannah, leisure entered through your pores and made you poor in spirit. I have no work to push me. I have no love to hold me. I have no hope to lift me. Only cleaning, which is not truly leisure, Hannah. But you can fold these shirts like they do in the boutique's sweetness. Take a little pride in the smallish things. How shiny your blue tea kettle. Branches slam against the windows, but your house is a fortress, and you are too, Hannah. Sometimes I like to uh, I like to look at my phone to see what time it is, but also I like to. Uh, I'm just doing some math. Okay, um, I like to enter contests sometimes, like book contests, but they won't let you have your own name in the book because it needs to be totally anonymous. So when I write these poems with my name in them, I just change it to Anna, and I feel like that is so easy that I might just get disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> but like I was trying to do like Sarah or Rachel or like Marjorie or something, and I always felt like such a liar. <laughs> we have no instincts, only legs to run on. And when one is running, all objects appear blurry. I do not understand how I see some movements of your face and not others. I know that with each flinch, you're telling me something. I've forgotten what to ask because now there's nothing but questions. In an ocean, I can't see the drops of water and also not the salt. Once you described my temperament as salty and not in a kind way, Similarly, my nose is longer than yours, and I never knew to feel bad about it, for I was born innocent and stayed that way until only recently. So I define innocence in my own way and refuse to listen to people who pay no attention to how I like to be spoken to. I learn to be demanding from the Lord who asks a lot of me. If I disappoint him, it's only because at night I am too tired. It's at night that the Lord wants my courage, and he brings his creation to my door to test me. I send them away with words, but often I fear that they will send me away and live in my house where it's warmer, since the human home is the envy of creation. We use our homes to advertise our blessings, yet creation does not feel blessed, and someone told me that that's our fault. letter from there. Well, my feet had dirt on them pretty much all the time. Because it was my birthday, I was given a pinata and I beat it very thoroughly. Sobbing all the while, I told my dearest friend she would never be happy. This is not my wish for you, I said. I'm not trying to issue a curse. But what should we do with the thoughts when we think them? I found exercise to be very useful. I found books to be a knife and a comfort. But confronted on the road by many automobiles, I was indecent and abandoned my kindness. What can you spare? Asked a man dressed in Christmas. And I said, only the things I dislike, and handed him the hardest peach from my bag. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Has it ever happened to you that you are at a stoplight and someone is asking for money and you look to your passenger's seat to see if you have groceries there? And if you do have groceries there, you think about what you could give that person. Um, and once I had a bag of oranges, and so I rolled down my window and I was like, do you want some oranges? And he was like, I don't like oranges. And, but he had already put his hand on the bag, like his fingers were in the net a little bit in mine. So I kind of wanted to be like, well, I really like oranges and that's why I bought them. But, I ha but his hand, so I thought maybe he could, he could probably trade them for other things that he did like better, so I let him have the oranges. So the point of that story is that I'm a nicer person than I appear to be in my poems. <laughs> no reluctantly. Okay, I just have uh, two minutes left. And so I wanted to tell you that um, if you buy my book here, not only will I write you a nice note, but um, I got these things uh, from the Poetry Foundation. They're handmade chapbooks that have a new poem from me and then also poems from uh, four other prize-winning poets who are very great and then also um, paintings by this poet named Mark Strand who died recently, but he looked like um, Clint Eastwood and he was one of my favorite poets ever and he started painting later in life. But I will give you um, just one of these. Um, and I forget if there's anything else I want to tell you. Well, one of the guys in here, Denez Smith, like just last night, won a Lambda Award, which is like best gay man poet of the year kind of thing for his book, Insert Boy. So anyway, he's in here. Um, I probably have time to read like one more poem, so I'll do that. I'll read, um, I'll read a poem that features a couple lines that I um, stole from a, a student of mine at Rice University when I was teaching creative writing there. <laughs> and um, I just confessed to this in an interview, and I, like, I say her name, and I'm like, she follows me on Twitter, so she'll probably see the link to this interview, and then she'll see that I confessed this, and maybe she doesn't care, maybe she does, but she is really great, and... Here's this poem, Neighborhood <laughs> Beautification. Hello, poet. I read your book again today, and uh, with Houston finally being what I want it to be, I uh, have to say that I felt alone. Alone is a proud and quiet feeling where I'm everything, and everything is a cluster of four pumpkin-colored leaves still on a tree green in October. There are several white berries in the leaves where to live in Houston is to hear the cries of the neighborhood beautification machines, which only sound human if my friends are out of town. People say people are hard to understand, but those people aren't paying attention. In Houston, I explore, I explore the alleys of Chinatown alone. Tablecloths, flowers, and trash mean that someone's having a wedding. Thanks to a sudden parade of sirens, the nearby restaurant won't burn after all. Maybe after, everyone will put on nicer clothes and come celebrate the marriage. The world will always burn and be flooded with aid. In their colors, four leaves in October are dying and celebrating. I, myself, any one of us could say, am a marriage. Thank you.